it, like the electric discount. I'll give you, a, I'll give you a prime example. I was there in 1998 when it got capped. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, 1995 when it got capped. Okay. And we capped it for one reason. Okay. Before that, it was just open ended. Okay. But we capped it for one reason because the PUC was going to take it away. The PUC was putting so much pressure on a company that they said it's going to be gone. So what we did was we sat with the company and we came up with a formula that capped it at I think 825 kilowatts per, per person, okay, per household. And that was about the average. Okay? So we did that because because it was beneficial for the members. We sat there, I mean some guys yelled from the back of the room, hey, you know what, we're getting screwed, the whole thing. Okay, that's fine, we understood. But at the end of the day, you got to keep it. It was a negotiable item. This last one, I don't know what happened. I mean, did they gave it up for the extension. Okay, and, and that's what happened. Okay, now I got a, I seen a letter that was signed, and I'm not here to bash anybody, trust me, okay? But but somehow it, it, it's not no longer there anymore, okay? And you guys are smart enough to know why it's no longer there, okay? But the thing is, is that there's ways of getting compensated. There's ways of getting compensated. I think the company, they, 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 they were booting around the whole union. I'm hoping you guys are prepared for that if you guys do get in there because basically everything that I've seen go on is the negotiating committee didn't even get the proposal out of things. The company had said, here, this is the paper, take it or leave it. This is, they didn't go back and forth and negotiate on anything. But they are just at this side. It's a total monopoly. You know, it's how it works. And I'm, yeah, if you guys are prepared to figure out how to deal with that, it's going to be a for years. Okay. No, and I, I hear you. I, hear, I really do hear you guys. The negotiations, you know, it's something that I've been doing my entire career. Okay? When you negotiate a contract, we have to have proposals. That's the key. And if the company says, well, we don't want to talk about your proposals, we want to talk about hours of thing. That's not good faith bargaining. The key is, is to keep your proposals on the table and keep focus and keep that message going on. These are the things that we need. Now, we understand that we're going to look at your stuff. And that's why but this is what we want. This past evening, they, they had to file, supposedly they filed stuff. To, so whatever, who do you file with? Because they're going Unfair to Unfair labor practice. Because, because labor. they come off right off the get-go. The first, last, and best offer. Which is not legal. Understand. And that one never even got voted on. The only vote that happened on that one is we voted to strike right there. Then they came out the next one where they liked that 45 year age limit in there. And that's the one we voted down and we struck on. And now they come out with this new one and they did it. This is the part that affected me. It really got me pissed off. And uh, they come out and they did away with the rule of 65 because I did the math before I ever come here. And I would have turned, had my 15 years. In March, and I turned 62 in July, and it would have been golden. I had my post retirement benefits. Now they come out with a hard 50 and 20 years of service. There's no buy in, whatever, or anything else. And, and the way I understand it, this isn't even a done deal because HR can't even answer the questions that are being posed. And, uh, but anyway, I'm not climbing poles until I'm 67 years old. That, that's out of the picture. Forget about it, you know? And, uh, and like the HR lady tries to say, oh, well, I got in late, it'll affect me. Yeah, she sits at a desk, types letters, answers the phone, and air conditioning. You know what I mean? I mean, there's a big difference between being a lineman and, and being an HR manager or whatever. And uh, this, a lot of things, it was giveaway, giveaway, giveaway. Uh, the, the meaning raise we got did not compensate us for the electric discount and like the they made the bank on the sick, I don't know about that yet, the jewelry's still out on the sick leave deal with the retro one-two in the bank, I don't know about that. But all the takeaways from, you know, the retirement and everything else, and it's all they want to do is divide, divide, divide. The first one even, they tried to divide the office and the clerical and the trades. Then they tried to divide us on the 45-year age and our uh, negotiators were too stupid to realize that they instead of 45 year age, they made it a 50 year age, and they still divided it with the new hire date, which is May 1st, 2011. Yes. It's like they want to speak about Ohana, and it's all divide, 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 which I understand they're, where they're coming from is instead of having one large pie that they have to eat, they have little sections of the 
high. That's all they got to do is hit that. 51% or 50.1% of the vote was all they need to get what they want. You know, I'm telling you, it was terrible, man. If we don't reopen negotiations with somebody, which sounds like you're going in the right direction here. You have media coverage, which we lack highly. Our, our leadership was terrible. We went on strike at 3.30 Friday afternoon, March 5th. We should have been picking right then and there, March 5th. Not wait and decide and then, oh, and then they even decided finally it was Monday and then it was going to be Sunday. And uh, then once they gave us a new tentative agreement because they had a stack this high, they just kept throwing them out like fish. And, um, and you know, they, then they, they, oh, in good faith, we're not going to pick it. Forget that. We're not working. We're not making money. Why ain't we picking? The line crew, I think, the line crew and some of the other departments, they carried the ball, man. But a lot of them, you look, okay, there's 230 members on this island. We don't have enough to play softball. You know what I'm saying? I'm very disappointed with the membership. I, I come from a local and I was an officer. I'm like, this is pathetic. Like you said, it's got to get better. Yeah, that's what I was because people got beaten down for years I've been here. And I, I got to admit that I was one of them. When I got here, I came from a strong union, local, 125. We were we hung in there together after every meeting. You know, it's just loaded full of, of members. When I got here, I came here, you know, there was a few. There's just people getting just beat down, beat down, beat down, and dwindled to nothing. We go on strike and you see everybody together, you know, a big group, people hanging together. We get out, start picketing. They call off the picketing and everybody just dwindles right back away, you know. That, That's where we like, lost momentum. I know. It was only 98 votes, and now, I understand. And now we so end up great. with a crappy contract and thrown out there again, and this is what we got. Because everybody's like, our union screwed us again. I mean, if we're ready to pick it again, anybody that's not ready to pick it? Maybe against the law, but that's okay. But no, I, I hear you. Not only are you in negotiations. I, oh, I agree with you. The, the, the thing is, is that, that it's about it's about your leadership. That, that's the bottom line. And, and the thing is, that I, I, I'm going to tell you this. But we heard the same I wanna, speech, though, too, before. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just want to finish your paper really fast. I see you already have you know, somebody well known in the community. You also have a lawyer already. But yes. You see, these are the kind of things that just trips me out. Why, why, from this last union, they didn't have somebody back in them as somebody with knowledge of Lord, whatever it is, so the company doesn't bully them around so much Correct. of what needs to be done in proper negotiations, how things are supposed to be done. True. And, 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 and I see that already, so that's a positive. You got something going, and that's that's something exciting to look forward to. But you know, I'm just saying, the past <coughs> three times I've been through this, and it's, it's a bunch of everybody preaches what they're going to say, and when it comes down to it, I see yeah. the same exact thing come at the end. Well, this is what we came up with. This is the best. We were really hard on this. Shit. Shit. Come on, we, we were really hard. Really hard. Oh, so that's just crazy. I mean, we've heard the speeches, and they were right. always the same. Well, I'm going to tell you this. 1992, I'll go, I'll go back to 1992, okay? 1992 was my first, what, well, my second negotiation, but my first one when I was on staff, okay? And we came back with 4.75, 4.7, I'm sorry. That's wrong. 4.25, 4.25, 4.25, 4.25. So it came up to 17% over a four-year period. We came in with the travel crew, which they wanted the employees down at the production department in at Hawaii Electric wanted the travel crew. So we came up with that. We had them involved in negotiations. We had subcommittees. You know, those are the things that I think are missing. I think this gentleman talked about talked about the secrecy. The secrecy of negotiating a contract. You know that obviously I'm not going to stand here and tell you folks that. Oh yeah, I'm going to tell you everything that we're going to do from day one all the way to the end when we get into negotiations. Would that be foolish? But then the company is going to view the video probably. Somebody's going to give it to them, right? So what we would do is we're going to have things that we're going to use strategies in negotiations to better your lives, better your contract. There, there was one guy, I remember years ago, there was a guy who said, there is nothing that can make this contract better. So I told him like this, well, let me ask you this, you think that you could get, I, I think I can get more holidays. And he goes, well, you gotta get more holidays. How you can get more holidays? Are you gonna ask for Kuyo Day? You guys don't have Kuyo Day, right? 
No, I'm not going to ask for this. Well, you're going to ask for Martin Luther King Day. No, I'm not going to ask for this. But I said, if I was to give up one holiday, think about this. And my, my competitors will probably try and, try and eat me up on this thing, which I really don't care because they're wrong. You give up one holiday, let's say you give up Columbus Day. Let's make up, okay? Just something, hypothetically. If I could get you three floating holidays for yourself, would that be an increase? Of course it would. But but the individual I was talking to was like, oh, there's no way that you can get anything more than you know what, what you have now. And I was like, there are so many creative ways of doing things out there to your contract to make improvements to 